Yeah, hi, my name is Gregory Carey. I'm a, an assistant professor of microbiology and immunology at the University of Maryland School of Medicine in Baltimore, Maryland. I'm really a self-taught immunologist. I come from a background of biochemistry, and um, I was fascinated by the field of immunology, and I had one of the greatest mentors to introduce me to this field, and his name is Dr. David Scott. And what drew me to the field is that I, when I think about cancer therapy, I work in the field of cancer biology. When I think of cancer therapy, I think the best and absolute treatment for cancer would eventually or essentially be getting the immune system to see cancer as a threat and to actually target that threat and eliminate it. So that's one of the things that actually interests me in, in immunology, in the field of immunology, and primarily from a cancer therapy um, or immunotherapy point of view. The funniest things that ever happened to me in a lab actually happened when I was a postdoc. There are many, many funny things that happened in my own lab, but one of the funniest things of, in my life that ever happened was while I was a postdoc and we had an intense lab, and uh, there was a dark room we used to go into to develop x-ray films, and there was a revolving door and there was a dark room, and because we never knew who was in the room ahead of us developing their films, they'd look at long uh, DNA sequencing films, um, we didn't know who was inside, we would essentially turn the door and kind of feel ourselves, or, or feel our way around once we got inside the dark rooms. And there was a kind of a gag culture too with some of the postdocs. Sometimes you'd be feeling around in the dark and someone would hold your hand uh, after they stuck it under the cold water, grab you and then flick the light on and say, boo! <laughs> and so this is, you know, an ongoing problem, or I guess a funny thing that we did. So one day, it was my turn to actually gag someone. So I was inside developing a film. I heard the revolving door start up, and I thought, now is my chance to get someone back. And so I turned off the lights, um, wet my hands, and I heard the door turn. I heard it stop. And just right where I knew the light switch was, or the red light was, I just got ready to put my hand there. And I grabbed the person's hand, and I said, boo! And when I... In the red light, I could actually see the bottom of this guy's shoes as he shot toward the roof inside this, uh, inside this dark room. And it was funny until I realized it was actually our boss. <laughs> so, so that was one of the funniest moments and uh, funniest, funniest and saddest moments, maybe, because we all got called into his office and he spoke to us like we were two-year-olds for about a half hour. Uh, not to play on the job, safety, ruining experiments, behaving like children even though we were grown men and we all had young children at that point in time, all the postdocs did anyway. So that, that was the absolute funniest thing that ever happened in the lab, <laughs> well, as far as I'm concerned. The best time in my professional life is absolutely this moment right here, right now. Um, it's been a struggle, and I think it's actually the struggle that's made my character the way it is. Uh, the, had great times, I've had disappointing times, but all of those times have actually come together to help me understand science and its challenges better, to appreciate what I'm doing, um, being a little bit more secure in what I'm doing, not necessarily in, in funding. Uh, that actually helps me to help others who are coming into, the, into science, or coming into the profession, coming into the business more or less. Um, I see the landscape a lot better than I did when I was very young and maybe overambitious at points in time. But I think actually having a good network of colleagues and mentors and friends and people who are almost like family, knowing what the opportunities are, uh, list, being able to listen really carefully to where young scientists are right now and being able to guide them um, with good quality information and good quality directions or things that actually have been tested in, and tried and that actually work, that makes me feel really good about what I'm doing. So I think uh, right now is actually absolutely the best time uh, in, in my entire career. I am a member of AEI um, and I've been a member of many different societies, but this is the one I've actually probably been most committed to. And the reason I'm so committed to AEI is because of the strong mentors that I've actually had inside the society. and being a part of the, of the Minority Affairs Committee, uh, first as an attendee and then as a member, committee member. So being involved in leadership, for example, has actually cemented my commitment more or less uh, to the AAI. I have many friends in the society, and even though I'm a biochemist by training, I, I teach and 
understand immunology, it's that camaraderie, uh, this commitment to, to building the next generation of scientists, to, to having a deep pool of mentors at all levels. Uh, the intimacy of the group, uh, th these are all factors that actually have, have attracted me to AI and have actually kept me committed to AI. I'm involved here. I'm not just an attendee at a meeting. I'm involved in things. I, my opinion is valuable. Uh, my guidance is, 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 is valuable. Um, I get lots of good feedback on, on the, my scientific struggles and other things I'm considering in terms of career. Uh, in, inside the society. So that, that makes it intimate, that makes it fun, it makes it f uh, collegial, family, friends almost. Some societies are extremely huge and it's hard to feel that, that kind of, that real deep connection to some of them that I do uh, here with AI.